by a neighbor every day of my life, 24 seven, whether I came out at nighttime or in the morning. Neighbors don't do that to one another. According to what Teresa has told police, it seems that the Wagner's campaign of harassment has taken to the next level, leading Kevin to eventually shoot Michael. I just thought that they ambushed him in the dark on his way back from his walk. But Teresa's account of the feud isn't proof of murder. So Special Agent Corbett heads up the hill to interview the Wagners, where sheriff's deputies have already taken 42-year-old Kevin into custody. This one, that one is it, so. Kevin comes out of his house and he's holding his Glock 9mm handgun. So they take the gun away from him and they hold him. Kevin Wagner uh, was uh, placed in the back of a patrol car. He was not combative and he was cooperative. He agreed to, to speak with me. That's, yeah. That's ain't so bad. Kevin Lee Wagner was born on August 5th, 1971 in Elkhart, Indiana. He enjoyed baseball when he was a kid, so uh, we, we a lot of times I remember playing catch. He was always outgoing. Uh, he could talk to anybody. He was a great guy. Would give the shirt off his back if he had to. After high school, Kevin planned to become a police officer, but his dream had been shattered during his final baseball game. There was a, an accident, and the kid that they were both running in the outfield for a fly ball, and the kid hit him in his ear. And it broke his collarbone and his canal to his ear and everything, so he lost the hearing in his ear. So he could never be a police officer. Kevin decided to switch gears, attending Indiana University in 1990. It was there he met his wife, Kenneth. The two fell in love and Kenneth got pregnant, so he dropped out of school and they got married in 1992. When Colton was born, Kenneth decides that she's going to stay home and raise the child. Kevin goes out and gets a job as a purchasing agent. He done a lot of warehouse stuff, supervising, I guess, over shipments and in and out. Soon after, their daughter Kelsey was born. The family stayed in Elkhart for the next 15 years. But by 2009, the Wagoners decided it was time for a change. The kids were teenagers and they decided they wanted warmer weather, so they packed up and moved down here to Tennessee. Kevin didn't want to live off the land, raising the chickens and goats and things like that. That June, the family moved into the house on the hill overlooking Highway 370. He bought this property because it did have a lot of land and kind of a mountain area where he could uh, use as a shooting range. They like to go shoot. The Wagner residence consisted of a house, a shed, and then another third building. Kevin decided he would refurbish that building and turn it into a gun shop. And by the end of the year, he opened for business. But in August of 2011, Kevin got the opportunity to work as a security guard for the Knox County School System. He always wanted to be a police officer. Being a security guard was the next best thing, and he loved it. But Kevin's dreams have been put on hold, as he is now a main suspect in his neighbor's murder. Coming up, Kevin Wagoner tells detectives <laughs> his side of the story. Mr. Whitby told him he was going to spread his son's brains all over Highway 370. <laughs> I've never seen this movie. Two and a half years before Michael 
was murdered.